Do you remember how to do partial fraction decomposition? We could give you a brief refresher because it's something that shows up in a useful way in several places in mathematics. So basically the idea is how to break a fraction with several pieces in the denominator into several fractions. If you have distinct linear factors, single linear factors, s minus a, s minus b, you simply can write that as two fractions, a over s minus a plus b over s minus b, before you try to resolve the a and b. So I'm not mentioning what's on top of this first fraction. I'll give an example later. If you have repeated linear factors, like s minus a and s minus b squared, you have to represent every power of that s minus b, so you still create fractions s minus a, s minus b, s minus b squared. You build up to whatever power you need. If it was s minus b cubed in the first fraction, I'd add another piece, s minus b cubed. But still, these are linear factors, so I put simple a, b, and c on the top before I try to resolve the a, b, and c. If you have an irreducible quadratic factor, like something that's a quadratic that doesn't factor, it has complex roots, not real roots, then you write the a over s minus a for the linear factor, but the quadratic factor needs a line on top. You have to say b times s plus c, a full line. For example, 3s minus 7 over s plus 1 times s squared plus 2s plus 5. I can try to split that into two fractions, something over s plus 1, something over s squared plus 2s plus 5. But the something over the second fraction has to be a line. I check that this quadratic does not factor, so I'm not in the first case. This is a quadratic equation that would have complex roots. So the technique is to clear the fractions, multiply both sides by this common denominator, and then you have 3s minus 7 is equal to a times the unfactorable quadratic, plus bs times s plus 1 times c times s plus 1. Separate those. I'll show you why. Because right now you're writing this equation as it looks from the point of view of a, b, and c. But you can neatly turn this inside out so that you're looking at it from the point of view of s squared and s and constant. Just by scanning across this equation. In other words, what are the coefficients of s squared on the right-hand side? You have an as squared. You have a bs squared. But you have no other coefficients of s squared, just a plus b times s squared. What are the coefficients of s? 2 times a on this s, and bs, and then cs from the third piece. So the coefficient of s is 2 times a plus b plus c. What are the constants in this problem? 5 times a, no constant here. C, so I have 5 times a plus c. And now I can say compare the coefficients of the powers of s on the left with the coefficients of the powers of s on the right. a plus b has to be 0. There's no s squared on the left. 2a plus b plus c has to be 3, because that's the coefficient of s on the left. And 5a plus c has to be minus 7, because that's the constant on the left, equaling the constant on the right. You have three equations, three unknowns here. You have to do a little work to solve this. I'll give you the solution, and you can check it. You could have a machine check this. This system has solution a equals minus 5 halves, b equals 5 halves, and c equals 11 halves. So, to decompose this one single fraction, 3s minus 7, over s plus 1 times s squared plus 2s plus 5. I have minus 5 halves over s plus 1, plus 5 halves s plus 11 halves over s squared plus 2s plus 5. 